Hello everyone, bringing you a video today which really forms something of a kit update as opposed to a proper mannequin video. But nevertheless, I wanted to make a video looking at this kit, which isn't quite complete yet, which is the reason why this isn't a proper mannequin video, uh, looking at this kit more generally. The intention, of course, with this is to make a comparison eventually with, with British forces in the Falklands, this being Argentine, a bog standard Argentine infantry kit. Uh, now this does vary from regiment to regiment, it's never as simple as all that, but this is nevertheless relatively representative of a, an, an Argentine conscript. So various different helmet covers were used, obviously there was the nylon Tempex web equipment in use as well as the leather equipment, and that did vary somewhat from regiment to regiment, but this is nevertheless fairly standard as far as it's possible to be. Uh, it's obviously in, in terms of British kit there's a lot of variation there as well. As you'll have seen in previous videos, I do like to collect uh, some opposing forces kit to have these mannequins set up together. Uh, that's certainly true for the East German kit I have, the, the MVA kit, which has turned up in previous videos. And this is a similar idea, as I say, is to eventually make a comparison video and be able to have mannequins comparing Argentine and British kit from the Falklands era. So we will talk about the kit that's on the mannequin. The, this is 90% complete, although the Parker is not wholly correct and we'll get into that as we talk about this uh, a little bit more. The first thing we'll talk about though of course is the helmet. We have here an M1 helmet. These were standard issue to Argentine forces generally. This has been fitted with a distinctive helmet cover which is actually formed from the hood, the combat jacket, the Argentine combat jacket. So this does turn up in certain regiments, others were using US covers and Argentine made covers in various camouflage patterns as well. But nevertheless, this is a fairly common thing to see along with helmet nets and, and bare helmets. It really does depend to some degree at least on the regiment that we're talking about. But as I say, that's what I've chosen to go with here. That's secured with a rubber band, which we'll see as we move this round. And then we have a pair of Polaroid goggles worn over the top uh, with the band stretched around the helmet. Uh, goggles were extensively issued to Argentine troops for use in the Falklands, and we have a, a pair of Polaroid ones here. There were various other patterns in use as well, some of French manufacturer, I believe, different, uh, different manufacturers and different patterns. The outer garment we have here is the, the famous and indeed infamous Dubon Parker. Now this is an Israeli design, and certainly many of the Parkers used in, in uh, the Falklands War, or worn in the Falklands War, were of Israeli manufacture, marketed by the company Israx, which provided these to the Argentine forces. They were also made out in Argentina as well. So this particular example is not wholly correct. It's not far off, but it's not exactly correct. This is an Israeli Defense Force issue example. We actually have some Hebrew uh, on the, uh, the outer uh, part of this here stamped on. And as I say, this is not exactly right. It's missing a pocket, which we'll talk about when we move this round to look at the arm. There should be an, a pocket on the left arm, which is missing. Otherwise, the button epaulets, we have um, openings in the side of the hood, which we'll see as we move it round. It's otherwise the correct pattern. It's just missing that pocket, and that's something I'd like to improve on going forward. The web equipment, or well, it's not web equipment, of course, it's leather equipment. The leather equipment we have here is quite distinct Argentine manufacture and design. It's almost the uh, M1956, but in leather, in a way. It has, it's quite a modern design, but made in leather. So we have ammunition pouches here, which of course will take magazines for the, the FNFAL, which was the, the rifle in use, uh, generally the rifle in use by Argentine forces in the Falklands. I have a leather belt here with a large metal buckle on it there, as you can see. And then suspenders, which are which do take the form of an H, similar to M1956. We'll have a look at these in more detail as we, we move this round. You can see the buttonholes worked in here, which have little metal adjusters here. So they, they, there were belt loops for use with this, but they weren't always used. We don't have them here. But this would hook into the belt loops using a D-ring or directly around the belt as we have here. And then there's this little T piece of metal that slots through and twists to lock in place in these buttonholes, which gives you the, the, the adjustment in size and also forms a loop at the bottom to attach to a D-ring or directly to the belt as we have here. The ammunition pouches are interesting in that they do have basically a leather quick release tab, as you can see there. So you have the staple and the, the, the loop there with a leather tab. So a leather version of a quick release opening there. That's the what we can see at the front here of the, the mannequin and the web equipment. Just another detail to mention with the Parker, of course, it does have a zip front with this uh, button flap or press studded flap over the front draw cord in the hood there, as you can see. We'll move this around now and talk a little bit more about some of the other details. 
Looking at the right hand side of the mannequin here, you can see details of the sleeve of the parka there with the elbow reinforcement patch. Have a look at the knitted cuffs there, that, as you can see. You can see an epaulette up on the shoulder here, and these do fix with buttons rather than press studs, which is typical for the Isrex and Argentine manufactured uh, parkas, Dubon parkas as well. And then we have on the side of the, the hood here, you can probably see, we actually have an opening there in the side of the hood for, I'm presuming for headsets and things like this. Uh, that's a feature of the Isrex and Argentine made uh, parkas as well. It doesn't appear on all Israeli parkas, so that's a feature which is, is nice to have. It is makes this more accurate, even though it isn't wholly accurate. And then looking at the side of the helmet, you can see the strap for the goggles coming around there and a rubber band securing the cover for the helmet there over the top. And as I already said, this cover is actually a, a hood for the combat uh, jacket just tucked over, uh, over the top of the helmet there. Looking at the back of the mannequin here, you can see the, the very plain back of the parka there and the back of the equipment. And if we just lift the hood out of the way, you can see how this the suspenders come down here to form an, an H with this piece across the, the middle here. You do have these straps here, these uh, holes here for straps and also in the, the tops of the straps as well, which allows for a load to be carried on the back, the sleeping gear basically, the blanket, poncho, that sort of thing could be rolled up and carried on the back of the equipment. A little bit like the sleeping gear equipment carrier issued with the M1956, although it's a different way of doing it. You can almost see what I'm coming from, perhaps. This is a leather version of, of M1956 in a way. The back of the belt here, you can see perhaps a better example of how these little T pieces on the end of the, the straps allow you to clip these back through and form a loop around the belt. And obviously you have various buttonholes up and down to allow for some adjustment there. So that's how we have this attached on the back of the belt here. And looking at the left hand side here, you can see something which I've already mentioned, which is the absence of, there should be a squared off pocket just about here uh, on the arm. That's missing from this example. That should be there really generally for Argentine issue parkas. So that's something I'd like to get is, is a different example of, of the Dubon with that feature intact. Uh, hopefully an Argentine issue one, uh, that would be nice. And then round on the belt here, we have the bayonet frog for which I would like to get a, obviously a, an FN FAL, FN FAL, bayonet to go in there to really set this off. With that included and a better parker, this would be a pretty good representation of basic infantry kit in the Falklands. It was often stripped down to this level, although I would also like to include a canteen on the belt as well, really. That would be that would be nice to do. Um, so I have my eye on one, but then it's finding a cover for it. They're not particularly common, but uh, going forward, hopefully I'll pick one up and it'll be nice to be able to have a mannequin set up with, with British Falklands gear and our basic Argentine Falklands gear, have the two of them on display together. Uh, now that I have a house and space to do it, this sort of thing is focusing on my mind again of where am I going to put things, how am I going to display things, and what would look nice as a display. And this, I think, would look interesting and be a, a nice thing to have uh, as a comparison. So anyway, that's the, the, the left side of the mannequin there. So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. Going forward, I hope to improve on this and actually be able to make comparison videos, uh, which I'm happy with. Uh, I would like to improve upon the parker. I would like to get a, a proper uh, example, an Isrex example or an Argentine made example. Uh, basically just to improve upon the mannequin, make it that little bit more accurate. Uh, I'm quite happy with this just for my own purposes and displaying in a corner. But if I'm going to be talking about this, uh, you know, more widely on YouTube uh, and making comparison of the kit, I'd like to have the correct parker with that pocket on the arm. Uh, there is some debate about whether this pattern or earlier examples of this pattern were perhaps used as trial items by Argentine forces. It's not exactly clear. Uh, there is some debate online about that, some information. I'd certainly like to go with something more common, which would involve having the pockets on the arm. So uh, keeping an eye out for one of those. And as I say, I'd like to put more of the web equipment together. A, a canteen would be good. Obviously the bayonet to go in the frog and some other bits and pieces uh, to be able to talk about alongside the mannequin itself. So hopefully going forward, I doubt this is going to, to be around and, and completed in time for obviously the anniversary this year, the 40th. But nevertheless, I thought it was worth making a video just to run through what I have so far, and hopefully it's been of interest having a look at this. If you have found it interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below, and that will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can, both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to all of you for supporting the channel over there, all of those who subscribed on Patreon and those who donate through PayPal. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. 
And if you'd like to get in touch with me but you don't really use social media, there is of course an email address in the description as well. That's everything for this video, so until next time, bye for now.